Right on. Uh, I think that you uh, probably know that George and I share a brain. So um, I'm going to probably reiterate a lot of what George just said. And I have to give him a lot of credit as we've gone through this uh, process with the uh, with the internal brace. I am a consultant for Arthrex and uh, I do get a royalty on a kit that was designed to support, designed to support this uh, procedure. So with less than 200 cases published and generally poor outcomes by uh, Job and Andrews, this went largely unnoticed and largely unpopular for good reasons. When, when Frank Job and Jim Andrews tell you something's a bad idea based on their, on their careers, it's probably wise to listen. And, and we all did, and, and nobody really did this for a long time before we started talking about it again with, with better, uh, better technology and better experience. So the issue, as George said, is do we really have to reconstruct all these? You know, reconstruction, you're taking a tendon and asking it to ligamentize, to become a ligament. That process takes a long time, whereas we repair every other ligament in the body back to bone when it's torn off. There's not another ligament in the body we don't repair uh, primarily, so why not this one? And that was really the thought 10 years ago, and as George shows, certainly the one on the left is a candidate, and the one on the right might not be. Look at that huge projecting osteophyte. You really do have to select these cases specifically uh, for what they represent. And, and as he said, you know, our, our, pro, our, our process here, we submitted our and published in our first 128. Um, there's been a bunch of these done now. Arthrex estimates that, that over 3,000 of these have been done in the United States in the last three years. Um, we lost a few to follow, but these are mostly male baseball players. And, and this is what I was asked to discuss was a 19-year-old collegiate pitcher. So this fits in very nicely with our group. We had in our group uh, of about 110 or so, about two thirds of them were high school players and about the other third was mostly collegiate players with a handful of other ones. We've not seen any difference in the levels. It didn't matter in the outcomes, whether they were professional high school, college or something else. So it really has not mattered. Velocity doesn't seem to matter. I think it's important we talk about KJOX scores. It's nor it's, you have to know what the norms are. This was public by, published by Jamie Franz who showed that the professional pitcher had an average KJOX score of just about 91. And those that had had surgery had an average KJOX score of 75. So at, at one year follow-up, we had 92% return to play, as George said. At two year follow-up, they had an average KJOX score of 91. So that was the healthy professional pitcher KJOX score. And they rated their elbows very highly at a 6.7 month return. We, we talk about what are the other things that could make a difference here. We did ulnar nerve transpositions in half of them. They didn't make a difference. The KJOX scores were the same. Lately, I've been doing more ulnar nerve transpositions because of the exposure that we use that comes from the posterior side rather than the muscle split. I think we generate some scarring around the nerve and therefore I've been happier when I've transposed them than when I haven't. Proximal and distal made no difference, whether it was a full tear or partial, it didn't make a difference what the location was or whether it was full thickness or partial. There were no major complications. We did have a couple of reoperations for minor reasons, except for one that was heterotopic bone. Um, and all of them got their full range of motion back. This is my second patient who had a uh, lateral and medial sided elbow injury as a gymnast. She got back to full gymnastics at five months. The baseball player is at an average of just over six. So you can see here full range of motion and uh, you can see the incisions on both the medial and the lateral side here. I had to be there for the lateral side and I decided to fix the medial side. She was the beta patient. So as with other ligamentous injuries in the body, end avulsions can be repaired. The addition of the ultra strong biologic tape, the collagen dip tape may enhance healing and certainly provides a backstop over time, but it is not a ligament replacement. In college level athletes, 30 out of 31 in that group returned to the same or higher level of play. In fact, one of those pitchers was recently drafted in the 2020 Major League Baseball draft. In 2017, 6% of all UCL surgeries done on NCAA baseball players was repaired with internal brace. In 2019, that number had quadrupled to 25% of all UCL surgery in the NCAA being done with repair with internal brace. So it certainly is catching on as an option. I can't advance. So it may be a better option for revision than reconstruction. We don't know if the tape is structural or simply a scaffold. And whether or not you do an ulnar nerve is really a matter of personal preference. So the decision to perform UCL repair is an intraoperative one in my hands, and it's based on tissue quality and quantity, the level of play, the velocity, the age, the transposition, the location, the degree of tear, none of those things have shown a difference with repair with internal brace. And revision certainly seems to be a place of interest 
as this seems to be a much better operation for revision injuries than revision reconstruction. We still need a lot more to answer that question. So in my hands, we're doing a repair with internal brace in this college athlete um, if the tissue and the tissue quantity and quality match it. Thanks.